thank you all for coming for today's event, uh, next uh, edition of AI Radio, which is one of the activities that we uh, coordinate from uh, AI Slovakia, which is National Platform for AI Development uh, here in Slovakia. It is with cooperation with the Department of Cybernetics and Artificial Intelligence at the uh, Faculty of uh, Electrical Engineering and Informatics at uh, University Technical University Košice. So short introduction for those of you who are joining us uh, like for the first time, uh, this activity started at the department uh, that uh, I mentioned before. It uh, uh, was started by Professor Sinchak. At the beginning, uh, the main uh, like um, the main audience for our meetups is uh, students and academics, uh, mostly, but general public also in uh, from some point of view, because we try to like uh, uh, introduce or, uh, or uh, let you know about topics that are uh, not in the mainstream so far, but we try to open uh, these kind of uh, uh, these kind of topics that are within AI and uh, probably can uh, broaden uh, maybe your views on AI in general. So uh, that's uh, that's it. And I will now give a word uh, to Mikola, our today's speakers. Uh, uh, so short introduction of uh, Mikola. He was formerly a student uh, at uh, Technical University Košice. I think that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mikola, but uh, you studied at a bachelor uh, degree and later you moved uh, to like Canada and uh, he's very active Nikola is very active within a uh, like uh, startup uh, AI startup industry in uh, Canada today's topic will be focused around that so uh, you will probably learn directly from him about the uh, conditions for like uh, starting a company based on AI technologies. And uh, he's primarily like uh, seated it in Edmonton, uh, which is uh, one of the like uh, top cities within Canada with like optimal um, conditions for living together with Vancouver. I think it was in one ranking uh, set as uh, the top. And uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, he will like let you know more and uh, whether the main questions that we will try to answer is whether you should like move there or not. So yeah, Mikola, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much for this wonderful introduction. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, we can see. Okay, so the main question will be, should we be moving? So what does this question essentially mean? Let's find out, find out by finding out what this MUVAD essentially is. So who are we? So far in 2023, MUVAD is a startup community originating out to be the straightforward mission to empower digital transformation and innovation. When I came to Edmonton, I was very surprised with a lot of our services that are not really implemented here in comparison to Europe. One of the most probably services that were having like drastic difference between two major countries like Slovakia, for example, and Canada, that would be public transit. So for public transit in Slovakia, we have Ubien, for example, where we can pay for the transit. Unfortunately, Canada, and for example, Edmonton doesn't have the service to pay for the bus. You can just have a taxi card and that's how we essentially pay for the bus. So who are those people in Muad and why why, why should we be MUVAD? So people in MUVAD, they're innovators, developers, ideators, leaders, managers, and community builders. And we strive to make the world a better place with technology. So we're known to, committed to advancing the digital transformation. So that means integrating businesses and government entities to incorporate technology into their operations. 
And this integration will speed up not only the services, but also make it very user friendly, even enhancing the user experience design for that. So that, the answer to the question, should we be MoveAd? Yes, because being a part of a group like MoveAd means we help and learn from each other. It means a collaborative community where we can sit and learn. So for example, we can have like 10 developers sitting in one room. They will be able to tell each other, yeah, we, we need to build a project and this is what we're building. How, how can I help? How can we help to make this reality? How can we make essentially a startup a project? So considering we will be talking about startups, startups in Canada, and I would like to present myself a little just to tell you some context. So I'm CEO and father of MoveAd. MoveAd is a startup here in Canada that was uh, created in Edmonton. It was with a mission to improve digital services in public transportation. But after like six, like six times of me changing the ideas, it was formed to be a community hub for all people in tech. So that including people that are software developers, marketers, there's people in tech, people that are passionate about tech. So why AI is important is another component of that because how AI can empower your business. Startup. So for those people that are not familiar with this term, startup means that this is a young company founded to develop a unique product or service aiming for a rapid growth for market innovation. So a startup company, company if, if to be more broad about this term, it is initiated by an entrepreneur to seek, develop, and validate a scalable business model. What does it mean scalable business model? Something that you can build a project and you can make it global. You can build a project and you can sell it to many customer groups. So startups are designed to grow rapidly and address a scalable market opportunity. So, for example, if you start selling something in Slovakia, we'll be able to sell it in Czech Republic, we'll be able to sell it to all of Europe, and maybe even other continents, depending on your scalable model. So, unlike what is different between a startup and a traditional business, because traditional business usually, usually grows at a small pace, and they have a steady pace, so they are more stable. In the case of startups, they, they aim for a very rapid growth to the market, and they are disruptors. So they're those who, they're kind of like, when Nokia was here, they're kind of like Apple. Apple is a startup because they brought innovation, innovative technology and after that Nokia was easily forgotten because of the innovation. So they typically start with a unique idea or innovation and seek to address a gap in the market. So a gap in the market could be something that's lacking, something that's underdeveloped or something where technology can be integrated. So, and so a lot of startups often begin with high uncertainty and risk. So in the comparison to traditional business, where there, is build, there will be a lesser risk, but the growth will be very small. If we want to grow high, and if you want to grow quick, there's a higher risk of that. So how do even startups get money? There are multiple sources. We, you can get government grants for that, which are applicable maybe for almost all countries. Even in Canada, we have a lot of grants which are on the federal level, provincial level, and municipal level. So also along with that, you can have venture capital. Those people that uh, take a bit of equity of the company and they give you money and they could be also your business advisors. So that could be also angel investors, those people that give you a small portion of money for a small portion of equity, but they are able to lead your business to another level. So also crowdfunding platforms are also is a good way to fund your startup because a lot of projects, for example, like I mean the biggest ones, they started to be a community initiative. So they started as a crowdfunding platform. So people just gave the money to bootstrap them because they believed in the project. So let's let's for example imagine you are a young entrepreneur. Imagine that is you and you just started a startup. How do you properly do that? What are the stages to build a successful startup? And there's a lot of stages. It's not very easy to build a startup. So starting even with the first one is ideation. So this is the first stage where you build a startup, where you brainstorm and refine your business idea. So it is about generating a range of ideas, identifying problems worth solving. So is there really a problem you want to solve or do you want just to showcase like a very cool technology? 
And this is also to come up with an image solution. So something that does not exist and providing this unique value. Um, so this stage also involves creative thinking and research and pre preliminary validation because you will have market validation or preliminary validation. This first validation essentially means that you will be able to even think about the idea, like why has no, has nobody done this before? So the goal is to narrow down a feasible, impactful business idea that meets a specific need or a gap in the market. So if you can fill this gap, you will be able to have a lot of traction in this market or even overtake it if you're lucky enough. So with market validation, it's a process of making a user search and testing the product or service idea with the target market. So if, for example, you want to sell ice cream to the children, for example, that's your going to be target market, that's your target audience. And you, you can see if it's something that people need because you can sell a generic like vanilla ice cream and like a lot of competitors already have it, but you can have sprinkles, you can have different, different I know, chocolate ice cream, raspberry ice cream, something like that. So this is this involves gathering uh, feedback from potential customers to understand what are the pain points, what are the pain points even like what what's what's that bad review that's keeping them from buying this product? What is something that can be improved in a new product? And preferences and willingness to pay. Are they ready to pay for this product, or they're gonna say, oh, it's a cool product, but I don't really want it? So it's it's assessing the need of the market as well. So the goal is for the second stage is to verify if there is a demand for a solution before investing heavily into development. Because before you make a project, you must know like, yeah, it's, it must be feasible enough. So these steps helps minimize risk and ensures that your business here has a real chance of success. Because from what my personal experience, a lot of software developers, they first make a project and then try to sell. It should be the vice versa. First, you must get a customer, like what, what do you need? And then you try to sell in this product. So for example, let, let's say that this idea with ice cream went really good and it got market validated. So how about now, like, can you build it alone? Sure, you can be a solo entrepreneur, but what would be the best course of action? It would be a team building. So assembling a group with diverse skills. So it is about identifying roles that need to be filled and finding the right people who can bring your business idea to life. So this doesn't mean like you can get probably like 10 backend developers or like 10 marketers to build a product. You need a really diverse set of skills. So for example, if you want to build a website, there should be a front-end developer for that. For a back-end developer, there should be someone to do a database development or writing some scripts, stuff like that. So effective team building also requires very clear communication and understanding the culture because there are people who work fast, there are people who work slow. So there are a lot of different types of people and it's very preferred if you're making a startup, it's either, it's getting those high energy people to join you. So let's say you assemble a team of diverse people that are developers, marketers, salespeople, because if you build a product, it must be technical. And for sales, it should be a business development person, a salesperson, a marketing person who can get this technical product on the market and be able to sell it. So now we're going to the stage of MVP. MVP is a prototype, it's a mini viable product. So product development is a phase where you turn your startup idea into tangible product or service. So that's where I actually made the product and you will be able to pitch this product to investors to give you money for that. So this involves designing, building and testing your offering to ensure it meets customer needs. So it would go to all the stages of software development life cycle from the planning to until execution. And for every stage you will have reporting and you will be reviewing what has been done wrong, what has been done correctly. So it's a very critical stage that encompasses prototyping, which is like MVP. It's refining features and based on feedback because feedback is very important. That's why like even in software development life cycle or like agile environments, you should always have monitoring and reporting. So to make sure that none of the stages mess up, so to make sure that you're going to the correct direction. So along with those features, you should prepare for the market launch because this is the product that you will be showing publicly. You can even like, for example, a lot of websites, they offer them demos, for example, to demonstrate the products. So effective product development, it's, you must be creative. You must be very creative because you must outstand in the market. 
you must have technical skills and customer insights to know what kind of feedback you, you will receive. It should be also very viable and scalable because if it's just a local product for like local city, probably it's not going to be very successful. So this is why it's, it should be tangible and also robust. So let's say you develop a MVP. The next stage would be a launch and marketing, which involves introducing your product or service to the market and promoting it to your target audience. So you have a specific customer group and you need to reach this customer group. This means you will have a customer relationship management, which also could be empowered with AI. You will have a digital marketing, which also can be empowered with AI. So this stage is very crucial for generating awareness and driving the initial sales because you need customers. And it includes a lot of activities like uh, conducting like online or offline marketing campaigns. So you can have like, for example, just uh, three posts a day in social media about the product you're offering. You can leverage the social media, engage potential customers. You can also set up like events for people to network and promote the product. The goal is to create uh, the buzz. So like, like AI is a buzzword as well. So because a lot of companies show like AI in, in every product they have, just to say, oh, it's AI, I should invest in AI because he just has the word AI. But most of the companies don't even have anything related to AI at this point. So yeah, you should validate your product in your world and begin building a customer base. After that, it's growth and scaling. Since you get initial sales, initial customers, that means that you should keep selling. That means probably recruiting more salespeople in for that. So growth and scaling is about expanding. You should expand rapidly. Like you build, you build your market. You go beyond your city. You go beyond your limits with your customer base. So it means entering new um, new markets, adding new features. Because at this at this stage, you pass the prototype stage. Now you have a product, and this product must be refined. So this stage requires making strategies for operation, for marketing, to handle increased demand. Because if you have 1,000 customers, can your business handle that? If you have 10,000, can your business handle that? So scaling successful means growing at a pace that your business can sustain without compromising product quality. So that means like you have enough people to support your product, your customer experience is excellent. So it, it must be a balance between rapid growth and stability because sure you're a startup that most of the startups are not stable, but when you're scaling, this is very important to be stable because this is how investors are gonna look at you, this whole customers are gonna look at you. So let's say you build a successful unicorn startup. Unicorn startup usually means it's a billion dollar startup that you can choose what to do. You can build your business further or you try to exit. So this focus shifts like towards long-term viability or finding a strategy how to exit. So for example, with sustainability, you want to keep the business. It involves continuously adapting and evolving the business to maintain the growth and profitability. An exit on the other hand might involve selling the company or merging with another entity or even public offering like going IPO. So that means you will be only selling the stocks for your company. And this is how you can provide the value for your investors who invested in equity in you because they can sell it off after on the public market. So this stage requires careful planning because you can easily go bankrupt if you do a poor strategy and then your company will be worth nothing. So this is like probably like very more, probably most quick startup 101 for all of us just to understand how the startup works. Now we will go to Canadian market. So Canadian startup ecosystem. As you can see from the global ranking, we have the seventh place of highest funding country globally for startup funding in 2023. This means we have a lot of venture capital investments here as well. And besides that, we also uh, have a lot of government grants that we use to keep the startup going. For the last year funding, Canada raised over $4 billion dollars. Which, which is a lot because startups are usually, it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a specific niche because it's not a traditional business because only 10% of startups succeed, 90% of them fail. And because of very simple reasons, you cannot handle the growth, your idea is not good enough, or there's no demand for your idea right now because there are a lot of things that are very, very important for the startup. One of them is timing. If the product feels right timing, so like are you selling this at the right time, they need to do it later because there's always demand regarding the timing. 
So we have over 3,000 startups across Canada, which is like official statistics, but I'm sure there's more because creating a startup is very essential easy, but keeping up with the startup, making it like live and not abandoning it is another question. So we have a lot of notable startups that probably even like uh, a lot of people know about. Probably one, one of the most popular ones will be Intergate AI, Ada, Shopify, and Neo Financial. So we will go along with them. And also there's a lot of skill talent challenge because how of the startups, they're looking for outsourcing because Canada employees are where Canadian employees, like they're very hard to keep. And most of the startups, they prefer to outsource it to Europe, to India, or to other countries. So now let's talk about applications of AI here. So AI is significant transforming global industries by enhancing efficiency, innovation, and creating new opportunities in the market. So it's projected to generate approximately additionally $15 trillion to the global economy by by 2023, so like that, like in six years, the illustrating its potential to boost global economic activity substantially. So this growth is attributed to AI applications across various sectors, including manufacturing, healthcare, public services, retail, finance, and national security. For example, with the manufacturing, AI is being used to for research and development. You can also have it for predict predictive analytics. You can have it for real-time operations management. So you can revolutionize the production processes and like, because we have a lot of manual work at manufacturing that, that could be probably easily replaced in the future. Maybe not now, but in the near future, I can see that, that, that is more, more, more likely happening because that's a labor cost reduction and businesses can really thrive on that. So the next would be healthcare sector and they benefit from AI to improve risk management and patient engagement. So with chatbots for medics, knowledge creation, the standardizing the data. Well, data is a very important part in, in any AI. And this, that also means transforming patient care and disease management. So having a database that, for example, you can take a photo of your hand of the bruise and, and with utilizing the computer vision and having like millions of data sets of this phone, they can able to tell like what kind of injury is that or what kind of infection is that. This is an unknown application of AI that could be implemented even like for this perspective, not from the doctors, but for the customers who use doctors. The next sector I would like to talk about is public sector, because you can have a lot of stuff implemented with the city. I would probably like use an example of Ukraine that for example, we have DIA, which is a digital ID document. And they also use AI in those, in those practices to pull the databases, pull the police reports as well. So that's more efficient data usage. And also that's improving public services and safety as well, because there is no chance probably because data, data set is trained good enough to know what, what it is pulling. Because like, for example, if you just train a model with just have a lot of data sets, at the beginning it could be not very accurate. But with the public sector, it could be more dangerous because you can have a leak of private data. So like private, public sector probably will be one of the last ones to improve, but eventually this is going to improve all of our lives. So what about retail? Retail is a big part in AI as well because that's enhanced customer service that also predictive analytics, that's personalized shopping experiences and optimizing inventory management. So for example, if you, for example, sell something, it will actually automatically get sold. So POS systems also will apply to that. But however, even like with a lot of those innovations, AI has a lot of uh, challenges as any adoption of the technology. So companies that are fully integrated AI could significantly outperform non-adopters. So this is a challenge for all the companies that are not technology driven by default. So if you're not using technology in your business, then means you, you're losing, you're losing out on opportunity. And those companies that will actually use AI and technology, they will potentially double the cash cash flow. But yeah, they will just double it. So that means like increase by 200%. And workers might face shifts in job demand because like if there's a repetitive manual task and people like, yeah, well, well we need to get a better profession because uh, we, we got replaced by AI. But with this thing, probably it's more paranoid 
because those people that work manually, they could be supervisors of the work. They don't have to carry stuff with their hands anymore. They can supervise the work of AI because most of the technologies, they have to be supervised at the beginning. But those roles that, for example, like manual, manual labor will probably require more digital skills at this point if they have to supervise those systems. So the next topic I would like to talk about this, like very prominent Canadian startups that actually use AI. So Covio is one of them. So Covio is a composable AI search and generative experience platform. It has the inter intelligence layer that powers in the life, trust and connected experiences. So what does it mean experiences? It, means it is more about customer experiences. So you can delight customers, augment employee capabilities and drive superior business outcomes with semantic search, AI recommendations, unified personalization and gen AI answering. So they have a short demo that I would like to guys show you. If there is no sound, please tell me. Oh, okay, just a second. Coveo is an AI cloud platform that powers search, recommendations, and personalization experiences for SAP Commerce storefronts. Coveo is well-tuned for large and complex B2B requirements with unique indexing technology, innovative machine learning, and proven enterprise scalability for some of the industry's most extensive digital storefronts. Let's take a quick look at Coveo in action. When customers log in, they're presented with a homepage that is personalized for them based on previous interactions, their context, order preferences, and more. For example, here we notice buy again recommendations based on previously purchased sonar equipment as well as recommendations based on recently viewed products. When using the search box, Coveo automatically suggests queries and displays relevant product previews while customers type. It doesn't matter if a customer is searching by product name or SKU, if the SKU is not formatted correctly, or even if they make an error in spelling. Coveo's automatic query correction leads them to the most relevant results. This is all driven by machine learning and successful outcomes from previous searches. This does not rely on keyword matching or a lot of manual rules created by your commerce team. The search results page also tunes the order of products for relevance based on machine learning. However, merchandising teams can also easily tune results according to your business needs, such as boosting items for campaigns or promotions. Notice the category GPS has been automatically selected based on our search. This is part of our dynamic navigation experience functionality. This automatic scoping ensures that if a customer sorts on pricing from low to high, they will see only GPSs rather than other less relevant items such as GPS accessories. As most B2B catalogs are large and complex, where products might have hundreds of associated attributes, it can be a challenge for customers to find the exact item they need fast and efficiently. Coveo can help again here with a dynamic navigation functionality. This means the filters that are shown, the order of the filters, and the values within each filter will automatically appear or reorder based on the context of their search and popularity. Customer-specific pricing and product availability means search can get complicated fast in B2B. However, Coveo is able to handle this seamlessly with our unique indexing capability. Here, we see the pricing for Bob the Boat Builder. But if we switch to a non-logged-in session, the public pricing is displayed. The result is lower assisted sales costs and less frustration for customers. Moving down on the product detail page, we see a variety of recommendation models at work here. As Coveo captures more information on your customers' behaviors and purchases, the machine learning models will automatically tune and recommend the most relevant products for them. Your B2B buyers might also be looking for other types of information to make a decision. Coveo can help you streamline their journey by surfacing any type of content within a single unified result set. Here, we see related articles contextualized to the search performed. New customers may typically land directly on a listing page from a Google search. Coveo AI can ensure they land well by optimizing listing pages automatically so that products are ranked for relevance and conversion. Coveo also uniquely manages real-time availability directly from the listing page 
so buyers can filter and view inventory by specific locations or what is available to ship now. As a last note on personalization, as Coveo AI is able to help map out product affinities and tracks each in-session event, query suggestions and the way products are ranked will adjust in real time. For example, here we see when Bob searches for a radio. The handheld radios rank at the top, which is different from someone who just landed on the site and performs the same search. Finally, with Coveo's pre-configured analytics dashboards, you can easily report on top performing queries, understand what products customers are searching for and not finding, or accurately measure attribution between search and product recommendations. This has been a quick overview of how Coveo can power more intelligent buying experiences on your SAP storefront. Okay, so essentially what the reader was telling about that we, you can have an e-commerce business where you can just load the products and then like an AI will be able to assign those products and configure your search and optimization. So you will be able to be appearing such as like Google Bing and stuff like that. Also, when the customers will search for something, it will give them very personalized recommendations. So it will use their uh, basically data that they are producing on the website. For example, like when they're going around the pages, the the website will know what they're looking for, and the based on that, they will provide personalized recommendations for what they need to buy. So the next company we like to talk about is Atabolics, which is a company that's founded in Alberta. That's like uh, it. It's a it's it was based in Calgary. With uh, uh, for some context, Alberta has two big cities, which is Edmonton, where I live in, and Calgary. So Calgary uh, made uh, Autobotics. So Autobotics is actually the world's first 3D robotics uh, robotic supply chain system for modern commerce. So it is inspired by the framework of ant colonies. Autobotics replaced the rows and aisles of traditional fulfillment centers with a patented storage structure and robotic shuttles that utilize both horizontal and vertical space, which reduces the company's warehouse needs by 85%, which is like a crazy amount of percentage. By empowering retailers to place fulfillment centers near high-density urban areas, Atabotics helps create jobs and increase carbon emissions by closing the last mile delivery gap. So here in Calgary, Atabotics has been adopted by major brands, including luxury department store, Nordstrom, I call apparel, food, and beverage and home goods. And Antibiotics uh, has fulfillment centers across all the United States and Canada. So that's a short reportage from how the warehouse actually looks like. And they are competing with Amazon at this point. Amazon is crazy huge. So Antibiotics is just a startup based from Calgary. This is something that anyone can do if they do it properly. Increase spend volume by giving. This week, CNBC releases the Disruptor 50 list. Companies shaking up their space. Julia Borston reports on one company tackling the shipping and warehouse business. <laughs> The explosion of e-commerce means demand for warehouse automation is projected to top $25 billion in five years, double the size of the market back in 2018. Atabotics is poised to capture that growth. Its robotic warehousing and fulfillment system shrinks the footprint of a massive warehouse into an office building by making storage vertical, and it uses machine learning to determine where to store items and what to stock. Our combination of, of unique high-density storage storage and 3D robotics allows us to take a warehouse and put it into 15% of the space of traditional systems. Nordstrom's partnered with Atabotics in December using its supply chain technology to slash its warehouse space and bring fulfillment closer to the consumer. The company aims to cut costs and carbon footprint for Nordstrom's along with companies distributing food to restaurants, auto parts, beauty supplies and footwear. Coming out of the, the backside of 
COVID, uh, we now ourselves are looking at growth numbers that we were predicting for four or five years in the future. In fact, inbound requests from retailers grew by four times since coronavirus. And now Atabonics is in talks with a number of grocery delivery companies as it looks to help retailers keep up with Amazon's speedy delivery. Julia Borston, CNBC. Okay, so that was Atomorix. So just from this inspiration to the people who are watching, it's possible for anyone to do something like that. If they just start properly, and they just like, if they will have this high energy just to go forward and, and rip everything. So the next product will be Ada, which is like, a, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice product, like from my own personal experience. It's an AI chatbot, which is not really probably surprising for most of the people because we have ChatGPT already. But Ada is an AI-powered customer service automation platform and it has a mission to make customer experience extraordinary for everyone. So it focuses on automated customer experiences and their solutions including chatbots for customer support. And that showcases how AI can easily replace the customer support. And Ada itself for our cultural region. It envisions a world where every customer interaction is resolved by AI. So since 2016, Ada has powered more than 4 billion automated customer interactions from brands like Wealthsimple and many, many other companies. So this is a short video as well about the demo and how it actually works. mentioned, we want to empower you to automate resolutions in all the channels you use to service customers with as little effort as possible. We know that phone is still the highest volume of support channel for many companies. It's also usually the most costly one for customer service teams to manage. There's two reasons for this. First of all, traditional tools like IVRs that rely on touch tone menus don't effectively resolve phone inquiries. As a result, most phone calls need to be escalated to human agent. Second, Unlike in messaging, agents can only serve one customer at a time. How many times have you heard, we're sorry, all our agents are busy at the moment? How frustrating is that sentence to hear, even for folks like us who understand the pain of support teams? Today, we are thrilled to announce the launch of Ada Voice. Companies can now use Ada to create truly omni-channel experiences, building once and resolving inquiries on phone and messaging channels without having to duplicate efforts. You can automate manage, measure, and optimize experiences across all customer service channels in one no-code platform. What's even more exciting? All the generative AI capabilities we've talked about, they work in voice too, making Ada the first company in the world to offer one customer service automation platform powered by generative AI that works for both messaging and voice. Let's see what it's like to receive a response that's been generated based on my knowledge base content over the phone. Hi there, I'm Camping Depot's automated phone assistant. How may I be of assistance to you today? Hey, yeah, I'm just calling because I'm on my way to your store with my dog Fido. And I was just wondering, can I bring him into the store? One moment, please. I understand that you would like to bring your dog, Fido, into the store. Only service dogs are allowed in the store. We ask that customers refrain from bringing pets, emotional support animals, or therapy animals into the store. Does that answer help? Uh, yeah. I'm glad I was able to help you. Let me know if I can help with anything else, or you can hang up now to end the call. If you want to create a response that lets customers retrieve personal information or take action to resolve their phone call, you can do that too using our no-code drag-and-drop builder and easy-to-use integrations. Let's check this out. If I'm already using Ada for messaging, I can easily extend an existing answer that I've created to be used over the phone. As you can see here, 
any existing natural language understanding training I have will automatically work across both messaging and phone. I can also leverage the existing messaging content and integrations I had for an existing answer and adapt them as needed for voice. Once I've done this, I can turn this existing answer on in voice. Hi there, welcome to Camping Depot. I'm your automated phone assistant. How may I be of assistance to you today? I ordered a tent a few days ago and I wanted to check on the status of my order. Want to know the status of your order? I can help with that. Are you calling about your order for the ultralight six person tent made on April 26, 2023? Yeah. Great. Your order for the ultralight six person tent is currently in transit. It is scheduled to be delivered on May 2nd, 2023. I'll send you an SMS message with a link to your tracking information. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Uh, no, that's everything. Adding voice to Ada is a big step into our multi-channel plan, but we're not stopping there. We're shaping Ada to be deployable into any channel where your customers are. To that end, I'm excited to announce that Ada can now easily be used in the Sunshine Conversations Web Messenger. The Sunshine Conversations Web Messenger is a messaging widget provided by Zendesk that can be added to any web page. We can now deploy Ada in this web messenger out of the box. With Ada, it's easier than ever to automate resolutions for your customers on any channel, all in a single platform. So essentially speaking, when you call customer support, it will take probably like one or two seconds just to respond back to your message, which is like a, like probably even quicker than a human being can like respond at this point. So they are trying to integrate with Zendesk. Zendesk has a custom integration platform for the websites where you can have a pop-up or just click and we will be able to speak with the customer support. So the last company I want to show you today is the AltaML. AltaML is a very, very nice company that has a merch studio, and they're also doing a lot of uh, AI solutions for a lot of companies. We will have uh, AI, uh, we will have AltaML uh, speaker at our event with Muad for the hackathon. So I would like to show this wonderful company to you guys. And after that, we can go to, uh, probably we'll skip the Shopify because most of you are aware of that. I will just give a quick overview. But for this video, I'll just show you just to give you some insight from what is the business model of AltaML. Applied AI is changing how we live, interact, and make decisions. And at Alta ML, we work with business leaders across North America to accelerate their AI journey and pursue continuous innovation. The success of Applied AI hinges on bringing together three things, rich data sets, experienced AI talent, and the close collaboration of subject matter experts with a mindset for change. As we bring these elements together, we're not only building customer solutions, but also pursuing high potential AI opportunities to scale into separate product ventures. We're particularly excited about our ventures Alpha Layer, which is focused on investment management, JuraSage for legal services, and Blue Marvel for industrial operations. AI is a data first endeavor. While traditional industry holds an abundance of data required to build these models, many organizations still face barriers in acquiring and retaining AI talent. Our Talent Accelerator program is designed to address the global demand for data science talent and grow the talent pool for our ventures, partners, and the broader tech community through experiential learning and expert mentorship 
our Talent Accelerator Associates gain valuable hands-on experience working directly with industry partners and data science experts on real-world use cases. At Alta ML, we have proven success and trusted experience working with over 80 companies across North America to deliver over 300 use cases. By going beyond experimentation, we use data to build powerful AI tools that optimize performance, mitigate risk, create new opportunities, empower talent, and strengthen tech ecosystems. Yeah, so Altamel is a really good company. They're actually like going to be very big and they're based here in Hamilton. So a little about Shopify. Most of you are guys are aware about Shopify. Shopify is an e-commerce platform that was based here in Canada. And this, those are examples, like there's a reason why I'm showing those. Those are examples of those startups that went through the entire stage properly. So they managed to get the customer, they managed to get the good product, they managed to get the sales. So that's that will be it for my side. I will probably just show you uh, the final slide, which will be my website and yeah, the last slide where we will have a QA. and a So along with that, I can also uh, share my LinkedIn, share my social media. If you want to add me, I'll, we can talk more about that or we can talk how we can make a startup or how we can integrate the startup because most of people are looking to probably discover this entrepreneurial site. And I'm more than happy to do that. So thank you very much for having me here. So if you have any questions, please do ask. Thank you. Thank you, Mikola, again, for your excellent talk. So uh, if there are any questions that uh, you might ask, feel free to ask. Uh, just unmute yourself and ask. Uh, at the beginning, I will start with one myself. Uh, you mentioned in the talk and also in the presentation of the uh, companies, uh, the videos, basically uh, it was area of semantic web, uh, generative AI or using chatbots. Then it was automation in uh, uh, like delivery of, uh, uh, of things. Uh, what is basically uh, the area or is there any other area of AI or automation that uh, is uh, on uh, like uh, on the spotlight in uh, Canada, which is uh, like which area others that you mentioned already is uh, Canada focused on? Is my so question. Canada overall has a very broad focus because of the very diverse business groups. For example, here in Alberta, the biggest industry is oil and gas. The second one will be agriculture. So because of like how robust actually technology and AI is, we can apply AI and technology to every industry. So for agriculture, you, have, you can have drones that can fertilize the crops. For example, with uh, oil and gas, you can have like uh, automated systems to control the heat or to control the monitoring systems as well. So probably from my standpoint, like or even from the story of Canada, they began with a lot of the agriculture. Because, for example, when a lot of Ukrainians went to Canada first time, most of them were farmers. And that's how province built, and that's how Alberta built, that's how, like, entire entirety of Canada was based on. But right now, like, we have a lot of diversity regarding that. The probably the challenge that Alberta is facing right now with the startups and businesses would be making investable startups and actually convincing those people with the money to invest into tech. Because most of people, what do they invest in? Real estate. They want to build the houses. They want to renovate them. They want to sell them or rent them over. So making those people just to invest in tech would be a very good option for them to choose. But it has not been very discoverable because uh, most of Canadian companies, for example, with the difference from uh, US companies, they don't have a huge brand. So yes, we have Shopify. We have those companies. We have a lot of talent out here. A lot of talent, close a lot of talent. Because like every Wednesday I'm making anyone that take Wednesdays, I have a lot of unemployed talent for as well. And like, yeah, they're looking for a job all the time. Yeah, they get any jobs. But the problem is there are always more people that's looking for jobs than there are people who are hiring because companies don't know how to scale properly. Because they don't go to this to this procedure of validating the startup properly. 
So yeah, the industry was very diverse in my opinion. And uh, you can compare basically the like Slovakia, the uh, conditions here and compare it with Canada. It's I know that it's completely like a different on different level. But what are the main challenges in Slovakia? How can we like keep up with countries like uh, Canada? What we are doing uh, badly so far? How to like reach the level of uh, industry, of the cooperation, academia, industry, and uh, application of these technologies? Uh, how can we do better? What is your so, point? What is your insight? Yeah. So like probably the. I like uh, the biggest probably bottleneck that we can overcome is by basically making more partnerships overseas, because Slovakia Slovak is making like partnerships within within the Europe or just within the local communities. So making those bridges with the partnerships across like other countries, just more having a more global mindset, will greatly help those companies achieve great success. Because even like for in terms of Canada and the US. Why US is very successful because they're everywhere. Let's take an example of McDonald's. McDonald's is everywhere. And McDonald's is really not really a food business, it's a real estate business because they're based everywhere. You can like they buy other property and they have the managers there, like regional managers who are all owners of this property. So it's not essentially a food business, it's a more real estate business. So just getting out there, showcasing Slovakia on an international level. Like showing, like, yes, there is a technical universe of courses, for example, a lot of great talent, a lot of great projects. And people should, like, um, one of the problems encouraged from the standpoint of university is to encourage how to sell. Because we have a lot of software developers, yes, they're great experts, but we need to encourage how to sell the product, how to sell themselves to the employers, how to sell their business how to develop their business sales marketing skills to this level where they can pitch the, the startup, for example. I think promoting this culture of community hub within the students, within the teachers, within the professors, making it very accessible for someone to be, uh, begin building a startup, maybe fail fast, but we learn from our experiences. So establishing partnerships and making this community hub and also promoted is like, we, you should make business because most of software developers, what do they do after school? They go for a job and yeah, well, that's it. We need to encourage you to build thinking. So how to get Slovakia on the level upper than other countries, make more companies, hire more people, build the economy, build the economy. So if you have, all, if for example, my strategy, for example, with Canada and the Ukrainians, because a lot of Ukrainians came to Canada. I'm, I'm looking to hire them here. I'm looking to get them jobs. After that, they can build their own companies and they can hire more people. So more companies, more people. And we can actually, there is an example from BlackBerry. BlackBerry has an example, like they're like they're building their company, right? And what would be a good strategy for them to raise? You look for the company, which for example, this is the biggest in Kosciuszko or, or even Slovakia and you try to get them more sales, you can try to get them more money. And that's how it, it will drive more hiring opportunities. For example, like I will even speak from the experience of Jim Beam, because Jim Beam is a huge company and they have like offices all around the world. And why? Because they, they have had a global mindset and they know where they were doing. And yeah, probably the, probably like Dalbar didn't have like entrepreneurial like background. He was, uh, he just finished school. But look at what he did. It, like, it's it's a wonderful creation of his Jim Beam. So uh, following the Jim, Jim Beam example would be a good good way to go about it, making more partnerships and just like helping each other, making this community hub. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, is there any other questions that uh, from audience that you all might have? Okay, so if not, uh, I would like to thank you again for all your insights of all the presentation and your time. And uh, hopefully we will like uh, meet again uh, soon or next year and you can update us on uh, what has changed. Uh, yeah, one question there is, 
Uh, how are you, Mikola? Thank you for the presentation. And it was asked by Ivan. Okay, so I will answer you? this question. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this question. Uh, probably like, it's a very valuable question. So yes. So how am I? I'm doing very well. Despite the fact, like probably like, the difference of the time zone, because like I started this position was like six, six, six in the morning. But anyway, I'm feeling really good about it. And well, I know that Bass Koshet is watching right now. So like I want to promote Board of Repeat Students Technology, the, the best student group ever, the best student group. So another thing probably about MoveAd, we will be making a hackathon. So if someone wants to join online, they can. We have a prize pool as well. So it's on the website above. It's called Alberta's first Gautech hackathon. So if you want to make a innovation digital garment here in Canada, this is a platform for you to go about. And yeah, so that that's it. That's it from my side. Thank you for the questions. <laughs> okay. So I think that we can wrap it up and uh, like looking forward and good luck in the Canada and uh, hopefully in about a year we can reconnect and maybe check what is going on there. Thank what you very much. AI so Slovakia is you. a very wonderful project, so I, I'm, yeah. I'm sure it will go very far. Perfect, so, yeah. perfect. There will be also recording of this uh, talk uh, on our YouTube, so uh, it will be available probably tomorrow. We will see. So thanks again to everyone. Bye, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye. Right.